Hey, it's Sol with another video. Today's gonna be a little bit different. I looked around and curated a list of some of the most prominent people to grace the space as a Blizzard staff, who lent their expertise to the world of Warcraft, and then left, for whatever reason. You'll find out who some of these people are, what they did, and maybe what they're doing now. So let's go go gadget, all right? Jeff Kaplan joined Blizzard in 2002, very early in WoW's development thanks to his experience as a top-end raider in EverQuest and a level designer. As their lead game designer in WoW and later game director, much of WoW's early direction was guided by his hand, reflected in the systems that were enjoyed during its time. In 2009, he announced via forum post that he would be stepping down to start on a new project with Blizzard. After many years, a lot of hard work, heartbreak, and resurrection, we'd later see the fruits of his labor in Blizzard's latest franchise, Overwatch. He continues to operate Overwatch today as its game director and senior vice president of Blizzard. Jeff has no in-game character based on his namesake, but there are a number of items based on his old handle, Tiggle. Rob Parter joined Blizzard in 1997 as a designer for StarCraft and Diablo II. He became a lead designer for the World of Warcraft and continued to move up in the company. By the end of his tenure at Blizzard, he was their chief creative officer, overseeing all of Blizzard's franchises. He left Blizzard in July 2014 to take a break. Meanwhile, Rob was inspired watching a small team within Blizzard create something as culture-changing as Hearthstone. From this, Bonfire Studios was founded in September 2016, bringing with him a number of other high-level former Blizzard staff, including Josh Mosquera, Nick Carpenter, Matthew Verslice, and Wei Wang. Rob was the guildmaster of the EverQuest guild Legacy of Steel, a hardcore raiding guild which included a number of Blizzard employees, including Jeff Kaplan who would later join Blizzard. Pardo also has no in-game WoW namesake, but he does make an appearance in the short-lived trading card game as Tracker Pardo, and this is said to be him here too. We are dealing with someone here who has absolutely no life. Patrick Nagel was a game designer for WoW and started the same day as Jeff Kaplan. There's very little data about his activities other than that he did work on WoW, and he currently makes contributions to Hearthstone's Tavern Brawls. As you might have guessed, his namesake is the well-known NPC, Nat Pagel. Nick Carpenter joined as an artist in 1998 working on StarCraft, Diablo, and Warcraft 2. He left in September 2016 to help co-find Bonfire Studios with Rob Pardo, but his position is currently unknown because, well, Bonfire doesn't use job titles. Go figure. He also co-produced the Warcraft film, which to this date is still the highest grossing video game film adaptation of all time. Greg Street joined in 2008 as a lead systems designer for the World of Warcraft. He left in November 2013 to work as a lead designer for Riot Games, where he works to this day. Greg, who is probably better known as Ghostcrawler, is one of the highest profiled staff to work at Blizzard thanks to the very high volume of communication he enjoys with players of both Blizzard's and Riot's games. You could say that his influence bled out a little bit with other designers and developers within Blizzard coming out of their shell to be the faces of their craft. This includes Ian Hazakostas of WoW, Jeff Kaplan of Overwatch, and Ben Broad of Hearthstone, all three of which are game directors. The good folks over at MMO Champion often take his regular and extended tweets onto their side as reference to WoW and MMO game design. There are still fans and critics who deride his actions based solely on having a face to the source of their frustration, even if Greg wasn't involved in certain parts of WoW at all. It's also thanks to his public exposure that many quotes can be attributed to him, including his jest about nerfing Retribution Paladins to the ground, a reference to Promising Ponies, and his likeness being placed in game as his presumed spirit animal, a crab. Chris Metzen, whose face you'd see if Geek Is was on the dictionary, the man who promised me a rocket bear and never came through with it, predates Blizzard. Having started in 1994, but his first work on Warcraft was on the original RTS as an artist. He had a hand in everything Blizzard, but especially with the world of Warcraft. From creating numerous characters, to writing its story, to contributing to the Warcraft Chronicle, to helping write the Warcraft movie, he also voiced a number of characters including Thrall, who, funny enough, developed his likeness in a weird symbiotic crossover. If you look hard enough, you might see him here in Fallout 4, or here in Logan. Okay, okay, that was definitely a stretch. After over 20 years and becoming the senior vice president of story and franchise development at Blizzard, most of his focus turned away from the world of Warcraft and was now on the launch of Overwatch, which he and Jeff Kaplan created out of the pieces left by the cancelled Titan project. In September 2016, he announced both his retirement from both Blizzard and the industry. 
which seems to be coincidental to the starting up of Bonfire Studio. He stated that he would be happy to bring his old friend Thrall back to life if his talent was required once again. Chris's most obvious reference is Metzen the Reindeer, who can be seen and rescued during the Feast of Winter Vale. Mark Kern joined Blizzard in 1997 as an associate producer for StarCraft, and a producer for Diablo 2, StarCraft Brood War, and StarCraft 64. He was one of the early World of Warcraft team leads, a title that would later be referred to as Game Director. He left in 2006 to start Red 5 Studios alongside several other former WoW developers. He was ousted from his position in 2013, and has since jumped onto several different social media campaigns for exposure, most notably the movement to create legacy realms for the World of Warcraft. His current project is an upcoming game called Ember, an MMO co-op shooter. Russell Brower isn't a developer, per se, but hey, he's a developer of music, and his work has been ingrained into the world of Warcraft since at least the Burning Crusade expansion. His work is extensive, from music to sound effects, and we've been awarded with his compositions up until now. His position as senior audio director was eliminated in July of 2017. Since then, he's become a freelancer, and has stated publicly that he's open for future collaborations with Blizzard when it was right. His namesake can be found within Kurthaven and the Twilight Highlands. But what you should probably do is turn your music on and just wander around. Dave Kosak joined Blizzard in 2009 after gaining a little bit of notoriety with a popular webcomic called Flintlock's Guide to Azeroth, and held several positions on the WoW team including lead quest designer and lead narrative designer. Like Chris Messon, this made him very influential in World of Warcraft story direction. He also contributed to some of the web-based stories and comics we've seen over the years, as well as the Warcraft Chronicles series. In November 2016, Dave announced that he would be making an internal move to the Hearthstone team as a developer. Northwatch Captain Kosak can be found over on Windshear Hold in Stone Talon Mountains. Brian Holinka joined Blizzard in 2012 as a designer and eventually senior PvP designer for the World of Warcraft. His tenure there as the face of the developer side of PvP was colorful, not unlike Greg Street. His public exposure to fans and critics led to numerous memes and attacks on the former Air Force captain. Brian was known for his sometimes curt responses that sometimes left players feeling like the senior designer was disconnected from World of Warcraft's PvP, despite his own claims of passion. He announced that he would be making an internal move within Blizzard in June of 2017. However, his current title and role are unknown. His namesake appears multiple times in WoW, as Armsmaster Holinka for the Alliance and Ru Desvin for the Horde. Both NPCs are Conquest Quartermasters from the Missa Pandaria expansion. He can also be found in Eastern Ashwin with another designer's namesake, Chris Kalecki. Craig Amai joined Blizzard in 2004 as a humble game master, and moved up to senior game designer and lead quest designer for the World of Warcraft. His contributions include the leveling experience and treasure system in Warlords of Draenor, as well as executing on the artifact system in Legion. Craig announced his departure in September 2016 to go independent, founding Barrel Roll Games and has a title in development. Craig's namesake is Lorewalker Amai, who can be found on the Wandering Isle. Ben Bro didn't have direct involvement in WoW's development, but he expresses a lot of influence there. He joined Blizzard in 2003 as a QA tester for Warcraft 3 and WoW. He also made contributions within Blizzard's creative development department until he started work on Hearthstone as a senior game designer, and then became game director in 2016. Ben has several in-game WoW references, including a few NPCs and items. Jay Wilson signed on with Blizzard in 2006 to work on numerous projects as a game designer, making contributions as early as the Burning Crusade expansion. There isn't a lot of information, but from the looks of things, he bounced around a number of projects until he planted himself as a lead game designer for Diablo 3. After that stint, he returned to jumping around different projects including the World of Warcraft until he announced his retirement from the industry in 2016. Tom Chilton joined Blizzard in 2004 as a senior game designer, and then around 2010, he received the coveted title of Game Director of the World of Warcraft. As Game Director, Tom had his hands on both everything and nothing entirely specific. But as Game Director, his influence is seen throughout WoW, much like how Jeff Kaplan was Game Director from the beginning of WoW up until Cataclysm. On October 2016 though, he officially stepped down as Game Director to work on a currently unannounced project within Blizzard handing the reins off to the current game director, Ian Hezekostas. That's all I have, but there are a lot of developers and contributors who have come and gone. So if you think anyone's missing, feel free to trash talk me and let me know what I forgot. 
This was actually pretty fun, and I'll try to do something like this again soon, like maybe the community managers or something. If you like this video and want to support the channel, please like and subscribe, or maybe become a patron. Otherwise, that's it for me. You all have a good one, and stay breezy.